Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to this session of D Talks or Disruptive Talks on Literacy. I'm your host, uh, Mashur. Uh, we continue to bring to you uh, stories of amazing organizations uh, that are leading change at uh, the grassroots, change that has touched the lives of some of the most uh, marginalized and remote communities as well, uh, and have used literacy as a tool uh, for empowerment. And our spotlight today is uh, on an organization called Laya, uh, which has been working with tribal communities in India. Uh, and we are very honored to be joined by uh, a member from Laya. He is the communications manager. Uh, he's also the national facilitator for the Indian Network on Ethics and Climate Change. Uh, and he uh, he has been working in the area of uh, building community resilience to climate change, climate change education, and climate policy advocacy, uh, and has been uh, focused on the uh, the goals of sustainable development and lifelong learning as well. Uh, we are uh, very happy to welcome uh, Mr. Myron Mendes on Detox today, and he'll be uh, speaking uh, on, on the issue of how potential Adivasi women leaders are being developed by Laya's intervention and what has been the role of literacy. Uh, Myron, thank you so much for joining us on Detox. We are really looking forward to your presentation and we hope to learn more about uh, this wonderful initiative and uh, have some discussion after the presentation. Thanks, Mashud. Um, I'm excited to be here. In fact, I've been uh, excited for the last week and a half after getting in touch with your team, uh, Milita, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, Pretty excited to know that this disruptive talks that you talk about in terms of uh, literacy and how important it is in uh, things that some of us take for granted. And, uh, you know, it is uh, it is uh, kind of important for us at Laya as well, as well as for organizations who are working on empowering women, empowering youth, empowering leaders. And uh, today I just wanted to share with you in terms of uh, uh, our work uh, with tribal women and uh, how this came about uh, about uh, almost two decades ago and <laughs> where we are right now in terms of the crash literacy course that we are conducting. Is it okay if I share my screen now? Or is it already uh, been shared? Yes, yes, my, uh, so you, uh, your screen is now visible uh, for all of us. Okay. And we would actually yeah. be very excited to kind of uh, interested to learn about what's the story behind Laya and you know, if, if you'd like to start with that and um, I will. In fact, that's my first slide. <laughs> Sorry to yeah. Yeah, the, the so, um, so just to introduce Laya, uh, Laya is an organization that's about uh, 32 years old now. And uh, we have been working largely in remote tribal areas in four districts of Andhra Pradesh. Uh, that is in uh, Vishakapatnam, in East Godavari district, in Vijayanagaram and Shrikakulam. And uh, we work largely, uh, almost 90% of our work is with remote tribal communities. And uh, that has been our focus for the last 30 years. And uh, the word Laya actually uh, symbolizes and means also rhythm. And for our founder director, uh, Laya was, you know, for us, it meant this whole uh, rhythm in development and rhythms in development uh, when it came to. Adivasi communities and how do we move with the rhythm of the Adivasi communities, you know, and instead of positing uh, somebody coming outside the tribal area and positing a development framework or a development strategy for them, but working with them and finding out what is it that they want, what is it that they need, and what is it that we can bring to them from what they want and need. So that is where Laya came in and uh, we've been continuing to uh to i would say dance and sing along with uh, with the tribal communities and bringing in the whole development process uh to to them uh, so as i was saying like our, our head office is based in vishakapatnam uh but we have our focus areas in these four district uh, in these four districts where we work largely on the empowerment empowerment of uh, tribal communities uh, mainly for the assertion of their rights and you know promotion of relevant sustainable economic alternatives at the grassroots level. At Laya, we also support marginalized communities in securing their life, livelihoods 
and assisting learners in accessing and controlling their own land, uh, their own forest and water resources. And I'll get to that, uh, how we do that. Uh, so this empowering process at Laya is conducted in an interactive way uh, so that tribal communities can actively participate in local governance. Uh, and for us, empowerment is pursued through, you know, this alternative education processes, working within the context of natural resources, management, uh, herbal-based healthcare, and also introducing micro enterprises. So this uh, alternative educational approach has been drawn from my experience over the past 30 years with, you know, working with tribal youth, working with uh, tribal women, working with uh, tribal farmers as well, men included. Uh, for this thing. And Laya has got about uh, five major pillars that we work around. One is on safeguarding Adivasi rights for social justice, uh, a herbal based healthcare unit, a sustainable resource management unit, a lifelong learning unit, and a climate crisis and sustainable development unit. And this program that we are talking about that we have uh, initiated over the past uh, two decades on uh, you know the crash literacy course imbibes all of these all of these units into our uh, teaching as well when we, when we engage with these learners that we that uh, we uh, uh, that participate in this uh, course of ours so to start with uh, uh, we introduced this uh, 10 days crash literacy course about two decades ago and the main objective and it has always been our objective uh, of the program was to respond to the needs of motivated tribal women who hold some position of decision making in local bodies but are without literacy skills you know and uh, this has been um, especially within the age group of 18 to 35 we've also realized that these women many of them are motivated they want to do something they want to do something with their lives they want to even be able to read and write but they were not able to access it because uh, a decade ago also the kind of uh, facilities for schools and for uh, you know education was not available in these areas that we work and you have to understand these areas are very very remote even from our field areas uh, it's about it takes about three to four to five hours in andhra pradesh to reach these areas and uh, most of these women even though they were in, in uh, working with uh, government agencies or you know working at the government level was still illiterate in the sense that they depended on other people to read and many of them still do. Uh, about uh, 2000, 2004, uh, we started this first residential 10-day crash literacy course uh, to meet the needs of these tribal women in northern Andhra Pradesh, that is our working area. And since then, the program has sought to assist people who hold a position of decision making. And that's why we said it is for potential leaders uh, in local bodies with the basic literacy skills uh, they need to perform as effective leaders. And from 2004 to 2008, uh, the crash literacy program, uh, especially targeted potential women. I keep on saying potential women uh, leaders uh, because uh, uh, I will get to uh, this thing, why we focus on potential women leaders as well, uh, who most of them were elected uh, members of the local governance body, as well as other institutions such as self-help groups, as well as CBOs. Uh, currently, where we are at right now is that uh, uh, we have these participants uh, uh, reaching out from Vijayanagaram district, Srikakulam district, East Godavari district, as well as uh, from uh, Vishakapatnam district, you know. And these participants belong to various communities, but they're all tribal, they're all uh, tribal uh, uh, women uh, with the main age group between 18 to 35. Uh, why we chose this age group was because the, the, there were low literacy uh, skills. Uh, do, uh, within this age group because many of them as i said earlier many of them did not have the uh, uh, the luxury or the facilities to even participate in in school at that time about 20 to uh, 20 to 10, even 10 years ago uh, for the program uh, what we also have with regards to uh, this this standard literacy program uh, is that we have these participants or learners we could call them a pay a marginal fee of about 100 rupees, you know, to just participate. And why we do that is because to help ensure that the, uh, that they're, they're committed to the program, because we always know that we've always realized that, you know, if somebody pays for something, uh, there is some ownership and there is some accountability to the program. So they pay about 100 to 150 rupees, depending on 
uh, where the where the location of the program is uh, held and since uh, 2004 we have been able to reach about 1100 women participants and learners that we have been able to monitor as well uh, over the past two years uh, for past two decades now with regards to the uh, implementation of the learning approach what does this learning approach entail you know for the for the program uh, so if you collectively count the number of hours that we work for the program it is uh, it comes up to about 70 to 72 hours over a period of 10 days uh, so the program is a residential course where the learners come and stay for 10 days and uh, 72 hours of of those 10 days is for the for the training program where different experiences of various organizations involving in literacy initiative have shown that 10 days is the bare minimum you know and this was to start with this was something that we said uh, let us look at this the bare minimum to uh, for learners to develop uh, basic reading and numeracy skills however what we do also is we have a follow up initiative at least 6 months later with these uh, with these learners uh, to create learning opportunities for further development of learners' literacy and numeracy skill. And uh, we continue to follow up with even the people who have participated 10 years ago with our for the, for the program. And uh, these for, for follow-up activities also available through an annual three-day refresher uh, program that is conducted by our trainers as well as conducted by our field staff uh, with regards to, you know, engaging with them finding out again once again monitoring to see whether those skills have been retained whether they have moved up a level or two from the from the uh, from where they began you know in, the, in that sense uh, so in order to create a positive environment of learning for learning literacy uh, the lad team evolved over a period of time you know we also learned while we were uh, developing this program and some of the some of the few things that we learned was you know it is uh, that the content should be relevant uh, to the life and uh, work of the learners and i say life and work of the learners it's to understand where they are coming from in terms of you know uh, their agricultural background or even their marital status even uh, the number of uh, children that they have all these things make a big difference in terms of when you're engaging with them so it's a very personalized and a very uh, hands on one on one with the with the learner as well as with the trainer uh, creating engaging activities and processes for teaching and learning and uh, i think most of us know that uh, that uh, we learn better through an engage through activities and engaging processes uh, also learning content uh, you know uh, that must be useful for learners in life situations especially in teaching uh, when we talk about numeracy just to give you an example is that you know for them even if they were able to read uh, the numbers for them to uh, travel to see the bus numbers makes a big difference and uh, these are things that the small things that uh, that uh, make a big difference you know for for the uh, for these uh, for these women learners also also keeping in mind that uh, the trainers play a big role in uh, when engaging with these learners and it we we spend a lot of time in training the trainers as well as well as coming uh, as and as well as motivated and committed trainers to the process So what happens in a typical day with regards to uh, the sessions that come, that go on? You know, so a typical day a session begins with a lesson in which words are selected from the context of the learners' lives, and these words are of depicted visually. Uh, what we also do is, as I was saying, we have our uh, those units. You know, when we talk about uh, uh, Adivasi rights, we talk about herbal-based healthcare, we talk about sustainable agriculture, we talk about climate change, we even talk about lifelong learning. Uh, during these processes and we introduce these kinds of uh, you know uh, 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 words and phrases that are important to them so we talk about sustainable agriculture or we'll talk about millet farming or we'll talk about you know improved tools uh, where we introduce them and where they are able to uh, to uh, even uh, relate to the words or the letters that are being expressed to them same thing with you know expressing them to them in terms of you know an aadhar card or a ration card or the different schemes that are available you know so all this is integrated into the uh, into the into the course that uh, these uh, these women uh, partake in over over a period of 10 years these learners are encouraged over continuously to repeat vowels aloud and then practice writing them uh, 
the attention is then drawn to consonants and they are encouraged to practice writing them practice writing them as well uh, the same process is applied to learning the combination of vowels and consonants as well as the corresponding visual symbol so it's a very visual uh, 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 aids that are used for them to learn as well as you know uh, even uh, samples are brought to brought to them so that they are able to uh, to make a, a, you know to understand what what we are talking about they are then asked to identify these words and write them on their slates and on notebooks each lesson also involves uh, teaching numeracy related to reading time weight measurements and simple calculations this addition simple addition and subtraction related to money and wage payment so these are the things that in fact make a big difference for them uh, rather than teaching them multiplication and division of which is of no use you know uh, for them at that at that point in time in between the lessons also the learners are engaged to share their own experiences related to literacy uh, you know talk about uh, so it also we also hone their uh, soft skills during this time where they are able to uh, you know uh, um, make themselves self aware uh, become much more confident and they are able to speak up also because many of them are not from that background where they are confident enough to even open their open their mouth to raise their voices so these things also happen side by side during the program uh so this can include how do we do that we include by singing songs or engaging in uh, in, in ice breakers energizers and simulation games uh some of the sessions typically organized around themes around personal hygiene around health the issue of herbal based medicine uh, uh kitchen gardens which we have introduced at laya uh, organic farming as i was saying government schemes uh, you know protective legislations that would help them how do they address who do they approach where do they go Uh, these kind of uh, things leadership qualities cultural activities we also take part in you know in terms of you know uh, song and dance and stories from their own communities which are which happen post dinner most of the time uh, so these folk songs dances sharing you know for example uh, and the importance of literacy in all of these uh, this thing uh, is what we encourage during the during the uh, program uh, what we also do is uh, come up with you know learning materials that consist of letters charts uh, on the telugu alphabet uh, vowels and consonants as i was saying earlier as well as photographs and video documentaries that are shown to them uh, depicting depicting the life of you know the local life as well as the situation of the learner so that they also can relate to uh, you know the things that are happening around in the within their own areas we also focus a lot on the trainers uh now these trainers also are young literate tribal enthusiasts who are assisted by one person or two people from the laya team who are non tribal the laya team is basically non tribal uh, the same but that the trainers are young literate tribal uh, enthusiasts uh from within the community itself uh so they are uh, in, in the sense that you know they are familiar with the issues they are familiar with the area they are familiar with the culture they are familiar with the language they are familiar with the women as well when it, uh, when it comes to engaging with them uh, these trainers uh, we have a basic uh, requirement that they should have at least completed a secondary level of education and should have attended at least one of laya's training program besides the uh, literacy program Uh, so they should have we have a base, a bunch of other programs on on sustainable agriculture sustainable uh, you know uh, resource management on herbal based healthcare so these trainers come from these uh, who are participated in some of these programs of ours what we also do is we have a two phase workshop over a period of two days uh, you know for uh, so a train the trainer program is created before we have the 10 day program for the uh, for the participants and it is during this program where we train the trainers in terms of you know becoming much more confident um, training their uh, ability to speak confidently uh, training their ability to become leaders as well and uh, conducting the workshop over the, uh, the over over the period of 10 years a uh, 10 days sorry now who are these learners so these learners are as i was saying earlier are women potential women leaders uh, 
that range from the age of 18 years old to the age of 35 years old and uh, for us the selection process is very very important because you have to understand also that we at laya are not trying to uh, reach out to everyone and all all those in the community because we don't have the capacity and we don't have the resources at the moment to reach out to those many uh, that the kind of numbers that we should be reaching out to uh, but we said let us look at this potential women uh, leaders uh, who uh, maybe maybe look at number one for in terms of you know the age criteria in terms of the kind of support they get from their family and in terms of their occupational relevance in terms of you know some of them might be a and m uh, working as a and m some of them might be working as uh, uh, farmers uh, working in a, 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 a mandrega so a whole bunch of uh, different uh, criteria we have when we're selecting these uh, uh, these women what we also do is uh, before the uh, uh, the participants come to participate uh, with regards to the program uh, we send out uh, uh, to all the villages uh, notices sent and our uh, field workers move up over there and you know announce that this program is happening we have a meeting uh, we have a meeting uh, with these villages where all these women come in we have a conversation with them we see how you know how potential they are in terms of uh, being uh, being able to participate and whether they are able to uh, stay away from the home for 10 days because what we do is we do not have the programs in the village itself but we have it in our uh, field offices so 10 days a big challenge for us is having women come in for 10 days uh, where uh, most of the time the husbands are not willing to let the Uh, let the wives go out of the house for ten days, and that has been a big challenge. But if you look at the photo on the bottom, on the bottom left, you will see that these women also bring their children along. They bring their children along uh, to stay in the for the program because uh, that's how we encourage them to come. And these children also uh, uh, participate in the in the training program along with the, with the mothers and uh, uh, the the community. so in terms of assessing the learning outcomes of these uh, of these uh, learners uh, we have a checklist to assess the levels of literacy at the beginning of day one so we have like a, a checklist that goes on uh, uh, you know in terms of you know where they are right now in uh, in whether are they able to read a little bit are they able to understand words are they able to read the the vowels are they able to you know so we have a checklist of that and this includes the ability to of them also Were they are they able to sign their names? Uh, once again, are they able to read the vowels and consonants and other basic skills? So these things are judged on that. Uh, we are we uh, test them on those. So these learning goals of each participant are also identified. What is it that they want to achieve at the end of these ten days? Uh, and then they are placed in uh, learning groups, which are basically four different levels uh, with assigned trainers for them. Uh, so the learners are also formally assessed on an individual basis at the end of each day in the review meeting of the trainer and finally on day 10 they are assessed using the same initial checklist that they came with on the day 1 and to see how they have moved on to you know for uh, within those ten, in those 10 days what also happens as i was saying earlier is that uh, they are assessed to we have community learning centers in, in most of these villages and uh, we have refresher courses every 6 months for them and then they are monitored over there also in terms of have they been able to move up one level in over the period of time so in terms of the impacts of uh, the impacts of uh, this program that we have had uh, what we have seen is that almost 90% of the learners can read and write some words it's not a whole lot of time but some you know uh, enough just enough they can sign their name they can write their own name they are able to write some of the numbers they are able to uh, you know uh, uh, write the family name you know these kind of things that that would make uh, uh, instead of using the thumbprint and stuff like that uh, uh, we see that 90% of them are able to do that after a period of 10 days and 60% of the participants can also read simple sentences and almost 50% of them are able to read small you know one or two line sentences or small stories also uh, is what we have been able to see uh, from this 10 day course uh, in terms of uh, numeracy skills participants are able to read and write numbers and do simple calculations 
and this is really really help them in terms of even opening a bank account in terms of even you know uh, when they get their money and counting the money how much money they have as i was saying earlier these are things that we take for granted but we don't realize that this is something that is missing in these tribal communities that we are working with and uh, when they see money they have no they they uh, equate money with color you know and that's how they do that and now they are able to uh, you know even see the numbers and add and subtract and even uh, do those kind of calculations with even hundreds of rupees we have also seen uh, this is a big thing that we have also seen a tangible increase in the self esteem and the confidence among these women and particularly as they perform their leadership roles in the community uh, i will share with you a story of uh, of uh, narsamma from the konda reddy tribe uh, this uh, woman now she was a young girl earlier when she came about 20 uh, one of the first people to participate in our course actually and uh, she is now since 2014 after being a part of uh, uh, our uh, the program uh, she also came back continued to do these refresher courses she is now the sarpanch she has been the sarpanch since 2014 for the village uh, where she is working she also uh, you know uh, promotes our a lot of our natural resource management work a lot of our herbal based health care work within the community and she's one of our staunch uh, advocates for women participating in this course uh, the 10 day literacy course of ours what are the challenges we face with regards to uh, the program as i was saying earlier 10 days for these women is a lot and because a woman carries the burden of the entire household uh cooking for the for the family cooking for the husband taking the food back to the farming to the farms all these kind of things so to for them to commit for 10 days is a big big challenge and this is where uh, many of them also feel homesick when they are uh, when they are away because many of them have never been away you know uh, even though it is in the same district or within a couple of uh, a couple of kilometers away from where they are uh, that homesickness and uh, some of them tend to drop out because they are homesick and this has been this has been the challenge it's not that they don't want to learn but the challenge is that uh, there is this uh, uh, homesickness as well as uh, there is this uh, uh, the men don't understand the value of this you know so they discourage the the women not to uh, go for the of course but over the period of uh, of work as we have been able to reach out to more villages as we been able to reach out to uh, more women as i was saying about 1100 women we have been able to reach out and they have been motivators in terms of you know uh, getting more people uh, more women to participate in our program we've also uh, noticed some of the lessons that we have learned is in terms of you know that it is a very intrinsic and a very personal relationship between the trainers as well as with the uh, with the learners and uh, this this relationship is actually uh, what motivates and what brings out that change or that you know the uh, the the drive to 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 learn within those 10 days and uh, also understanding the situation uh, as i was saying so the, it's a very personal uh, this is, so this is one of the le- the lessons that we have learned is that uh, being with them and that's why the trainers are from the tribal community and from the community itself when they the thing so they know they understand the situation they understand the context they understand the traditions behind it they understand the relevance behind uh, the, uh, the 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 course that we are um, promoting or uh, you know uh, conducting so for us at the end of the day to uh, it's been it's all been all been almost 20 20 years now that this course is running it has evolved from what it was in 2004 to what it is now definitely uh, <coughs> in terms of the content in terms of uh, the relevance in terms of uh, you know because now we we've started adding nutrition into the course we've started adding uh, climate change into the course we started adding uh, climate change adaptation into the course you know bringing these conversations into the into the into the discourse as well and it will continue to you know evolve as time goes by and what we focus on uh, basically is you know looking at these women who can be leaders who can take this forward definitely but what so what we are looking at uh, is in terms of uh, you know uh, this course can be replicated definitely it can be upscaled no doubt it can be even moved on to non potential women leaders but also uh, 
anybody and everybody who has not had the ability who has not had the luxury of of being able to read and write or to become literate for that matter and also what we also include is at the end uh, is this preservation of adivasi culture and stories because that is the crux of our work and during those 10 days we introduce the songs the folk stories we even get herbal based healthcare uh, you know traditional healers to come and give share their stories we have community members coming and sharing their stories and making it as rich as possible in terms from an adivasi perspective so i think that i can I, this is just to give you a a short uh, a brief of what this course entails and how we went about it and uh, the trainers as well as the learners so i can end my presentation here ashur thank you uh Myron, for this uh, refreshing uh, presentation, it's it's quite uh, amazing the the work which you and your team are leading uh, at Laya, working with uh, uh, some of the most marginalized communities, uh, and then kind of demonstrating that uh, that uh, you know even people who have uh, who whose voices have not reached the mainstream, they have uh, yeah. you know the the immense capability to. uh to ch uh, create a change in their own life in their own communities uh and um, and, and and i think uh, uh, while you know literacy uh, through literacy you have uh, also impacted on a lot of other issues uh you know uh, so the work that your team is doing on climate change on sustainable development uh and uh, you know all of that and lifelong learning of course it's it's kind of yeah. a very comprehensive kind of an approach to uh, uh, development and and that's something which is really appreciable so uh, uh, i wanted to in fact start uh, with uh, the point which you mentioned about uh, you know uh, men demotivating the women uh, in the community to take up this literacy course uh, could you share a bit more about uh why uh why would men in the communities have this kind of a perception and uh how 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 did you and the the communities and and the women themselves address this kind of perception and do you feel that the the outcomes of the program have challenged this perception absolutely as i was saying earlier the women uh, at least in these communities bear the burden of doing uh, you know all the housework right from drawing water Uh, to collecting firewood, to uh, cooking the food, taking care of the children, uh, bringing the food to the farm where the husbands are working, going back again, you know, settling down for the evening and stuff like that. So for them, ten days uh, to take the women out and uh, leave them, leave the uh, leave the men, uh, you know, uh, without any uh, any or any assistance for that matter. That was the challenge, but that was the challenge and. The, it has evolved over the this time because what has happened is that we have penetrated all these villages now you know and they have seen that the women who have participated in the course have uh, been able to at least run the house better they've been able to run the house better they've been able to uh, you know even understand what the kids are going through in terms of you know, not as much as sit with the kids in the lesson but also understand the value of uh, the kids going to school and uh, the the kids going to the ashram schools and coming back so these things have changed definitely uh, but you also have to understand this this uh, mashu that these locations are very very remote they are so remote that some of them these places do not even have electricity right now they do not have electricity right now uh, uh, you know so the the kind of context that they are coming from is very very different to a from a rural to a rural from a rural perspective you know it is still much it is let's say as i was saying it is like about 5 hours from a rural area to get into the uh, the thing so for them these women have never gotten out of the out of their own villages they were probably married between the uh, uh, you know between villages but that was that that's about it so for them to bring them out for 10 days outside of the uh, outside of that that is a challenge that is uh, you know so then this is where we bring this whole uh looking at uh, uh, what you say uh, you know encouraging them to speak up encouraging them you no know, creating that creating a platform and creating that space for them uh, where they are freely able to talk so it becomes also like a counseling session at that point in time you know they are able to talk about their problems they are able to talk about the challenges they are able to talk about you know what is it that they want in life you know and that has been the whole thing with the trainers and the learners where those 10 days they spent so much time together that, then by the time it's 10 days they don't want to leave it's that kind of a situation 
but it has definitely evolved in that sense that you know uh, the men are starting to understand the value of it now and also what has happened now is that uh, uh, schools over the past 10 years uh, schools most schools have been included in these areas so uh, they've realized that the uh, value of it in sending the school, their kids to these ashram schools so why not why miss the chance for you know these these women also not to have not to be able to to be, to become literate. Functional literacy. Right. Right. Uh, th thanks for sharing uh, your thoughts on that, Myron. And uh, it was also wonderful to see how the children are also com coming along with the mothers and uh, being yeah. part of this uh, very unique initiative. Uh, 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 you also mentioned about, uh, you know, like the, the the skill of literacy. It's it's so very important uh, for performing a lot of uh, different aspects, uh, be it in your professional life, economic or social life. Uh, would you like to share a bit more about what is uh, what is the mother tongue uh, the mother tongue yeah. language being spoken by the communities there? And you mentioned that many of the uh, participants are uh, leaders, sarpanch, and they might have other administrative duties. So, is uh, is the medium of instruction or the language in the the official language and the you know the educated language in schools different from yeah. the mother tongue? How does how do you address that challenge? So in the areas where we work, uh, in, in Andhra especially for that matter, Telugu is largely spoken, almost 99%. Even the tribal communities speak Telugu. So that is the language of communication. So for us, that has not been a problem. There are few communities that still speak, you know, uh, their local dialect of uh, and the tribal dialect. Uh, but it's not, uh, it's, not ma it's not majorly spoken now. What has happened is that... Uh, a lot of the tribal dialects have been imbibed in the Telugu language. And so it is pretty much uniform across across the state. So the, the what do you say, the medium of learning is in Telugu. And because that's what everybody speaks over there. So even because I, mean, I am not from there, but I'm from Mumbai. And when I go there, everybody speaks Telugu. Even the, even the, the, the communities that we work with. It's all Telugu. So language in that sense is Telugu, which is which is broadly uh, taught and spoken uh, in that sense. Right. And th this language is also spoken, the like Telugu is spoken uh, in at home as well in these communities. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It okay. is uh, spoken at, at home as well in the community. Right. So that's why it is not a it's not a big challenge. That's what I was saying. If it if it wasn't, then it would have been a different thing to uh, make them literate in which language is it Telugu or is it in uh, in the in the uh, tribal language? You know, so Telugu is spoken at home as well. Right, and it's taught in the schools, and the medium also in the schools and the ashram schools. Telugu is the medium. But as I was saying, there are few pockets that still uh, uh, continue. So then we have the songs coming in, we have the folk stories coming in. Uh, you know, all these kind of uh, this thing coming in from the tribal languages, but majorly as a means of communication, the Telugu is the is the language. Right, that's very interesting. Uh, thanks for sharing that, Madan. And uh, uh, often, uh, when we talk about adult literacy, uh, and you know, th there is uh, often a perception that literacy takes too long. Uh, you know, like uh, what's the what's the purpose of uh, becoming literate? And and you know, like uh, you you mentioned some of these uh, perceptions being faced. But often, learners themselves, adult uh, adult learners themselves, fa face that okay, you know, literacy it takes too much time. Whereas here, you and your team are challenging this perception and saying that no, literacy um, is possible in 10 days uh, with, with significant success. Uh, would you like to share uh, a bit more about, you know, when learners walk into this uh, program of yours, what is their perce perception about their own abilities to become literate? And when they walk out, uh, what changes do we see in their uh, yeah. perceptions? So uh, as I was saying for us at Laya, it is literacy is not the focus, but this whole concept of lifelong learning, you know, uh, it, I mean, you can't do much in 10 days that uh, we know that, but you are able to read a, a few few words, a few sentences uh, that that has been a big, big, big impact that these women have been able to uh, bring about. What we do is when we meet these women is that asking them as you're asking me this question, what is it that you want? from these uh, the same we ask them what is it that they want from uh from this course this 10-day course you know and we all have aspirations everybody has aspirations and everybody has a 
a vision for themselves you know it, it might not be much where they are from but it is it it's still a vision right and uh, how do we bring about that vision and uh, uh, these are all farming communities these are all uh, communities that have been vulnerable to uh, uh, to the impacts of climate change vulnerable to government schemes vulnerable to all possible uh, this thing how is it that we are able to make them stand up for themselves stand up for their rights uh, you know and when you bring about these conversation it's kind of it might not seem interesting but when you bring them in together and say that if you are able to read and write you are able to also stand up for your rights you are also able to uh, you know uh, look at uh, a, a farming the thing that can be lucrative in the sense that you are able to uh, make a business out of it uh, we also have this herbal based healthcare uh, unit which is very very strong in laya and we encourage our our uh, these women to who come in to the to uh, participate to even start taking up a course on herbal based healthcare where they are able to work with traditional healers because we don't have doctors over there there are no doctors doctors don't want to come there mbbs doctors don't come there the only people who come there are quacks and charge them exorbitant fees with the, without any you know kind of uh, uh, what do you say without any kind of result for the for the medicate for the sickness so we uh, so the traditional healers have been there for the longest time and bringing about you know the, dealing with this regular uh, you know uh, issues on uh, women's issues in terms of uh, discharge in terms of nutrition in terms of malaria these this thing that can be cured within within their own uh, within their own uh, uh, location and from the uh, biodiversity that is available uh, encouraging them to grow their own herbal based garden encouraging them to grow their own uh, uh, what is this called uh, kitchen gardens as well so you know introducing this whole kinds of uh, this thing and we've also seen that this change has happened if you take them up to 6 months you see that they're growing their own uh, herbal based or they're growing their own uh, herbal gardens as well as they're growing their own uh, kitchen gardens as well which also has a double this thing in terms of nutrition bringing into the family where uh, stuff like that. so these are kind of uh, things that we've been able to see through this course where we've been able to, so it's not only about reading and writing it is also about you know bringing about a whole change in the system where they are at right and uh, uh, li like you said that this is like the the very first step uh, which kind of helps uh, create a journey for them uh, which you know which makes them more confident which makes them uh, you know uh, willing to kind of go out and Uh, explore different opportunities or create different opportunities uh, yeah. socially and economically as well um and uh, uh, you you mentioned that uh, you you uh, the your team has been able to reach out to almost you know like uh, 1200 uh, 1100 1100 such uh, uh, women so uh, how what has been the role of your alumni uh, in uh, how, how do they you know like kind of continue to uh, be associated with the specifically the the literacy program uh, if you like yeah. to share about so these these have become our advertisers at the end of the day all of them who have uh, participated in the course and they have been because of them we've been able to have the same courses within the same villages to uh, get more women who are able to you know participate and because of that this whole the challenge of men not wanting to send their women and on is is changing now as because of these people they have seen their own uh, the uh, you know this kind of uh, change within their own women in their own communities and as i was saying many of them are working uh, at government at government agencies working we've had uh, i just gave you one example of this sarpanch there have been a couple of others who have become sarpanches as well and taken up these leadership roles and because of taking up these leadership roles they've been able to also bring about change in their own villages and in their own uh, you know panchayats where they are working and this is what has uh, been at, uh, an eye opener and where people and so they become role models they become role models and they have been able to uh, inspire i would say inspire the other part uh, other women to come and now we have women coming to us and saying when is the next course when are we when are we conducting the next course you know so so that has that has definitely changed and uh, so uh, they have definitely these women have gone back and uh, you know from uh, promoted as well as not only promoted by words but also by action and showing that they you know that there's been a change in terms of uh, participating in that course and then we also have these refresher courses mashu so it's not that uh, we finish after 10 days so every 6 months these refresher courses are had at this community learning centers 
that all of them who have participated previously come for these courses uh, come for that sit for the you know refresher and maybe uh, you know some of them ask for books some of them ask for more learning material so that that evolution is happening with different learners at different scale hmm. that's that must be so gratifying uh, to know uh, for your own team that uh, the the outcome the the uh, the alumni of of the course are kind of um the kind of being the ambassadors for change and uh, bringing more people uh, to be in full of this so so that's really wonderful to uh, to learn um uh, marin in uh, uh, in conclusion i would like to also ask you about uh, how uh, this particular uh, program you, you have uh, already mentioned for example that uh, some of the uh, you know some of the uh, alumni of the literacy program also go uh, in the uh the 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 herbal uh, program as well and uh, it, there is there are these cross connections as well but yeah. uh, on a on a larger scale uh, how is laya looking to address um, you know the the challenges of uh, climate change of sustainable development uh, these uh, ma- major existential challenges which are there uh, and in 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 all these interventions which your team is doing strategically what role is literacy playing uh, and feed how is that literacy feeding into these different uh, verticals or uh, you know like the ambitions uh, that your the goals that the team has if you like to share your thoughts on that absolutely i think uh, i think this is a fantastic question to end with in terms of you know uh, uh, where we are and how we want to go about it as i was saying we have these uh, these five pillars that we are looking at uh, at legal resources we're looking at uh, climate change we're looking at sustainable agriculture sustainable farming and uh, so what we also have is that while this is going on we also engage with the same communities on these different uh, this is where we have technologies coming in where we have uh, a package of practices for uh, for uh, for farming sustainable farming where we also have uh, while this is happening we also have climate change education classes for the for the kids of these villages uh, and in their schools where these schools are so it's so it's not that it's a, it's in silos or it's in a it's in a, this thing we are engaging with the entire family as as a whole so the kids are being engaged on climate change the farmers are talk we've been engaged on sustainable farming practices while we have a, a rights to legal aid unit that is working in terms of bringing about uh, the aadhar card bringing about the pesa act you know informing them about all these kind of uh, this thing but as you were saying uh, the literacy program what it has done is that it has been able to empower the women it has been able to empower the women in such that they are able to now uh, take control where even this basic thing of uh, for me what was what was what made a big difference you know mashud was that they are able to, uh, this one thing i took for granted being a uh, mumbai city person and you know uh this thing is that when i'm like why numbers and they're like you know for them to read a number to know where the bus is going is 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 a big thing because they have to depend on somebody else other they have to take somebody else to ask them you know which bus it is or you know what uh, this thing so these kind of things have been and this has been empowering for them they've been able to open up bank accounts they've been able to sign their names on uh, different uh, documents they've been uh, you know on, on legal documents as well uh for this thing and they've been able to encourage other people to do that and that has been the uh, the thing so when it comes to the entire the thing that literacy does play a big role in terms of the entire uh, umbrella that we work under uh, this thing and at at laya in terms of bringing this whole lifelong learning so it's not only you learn to read and write but you also learn to imbibe something that you learn to read and write in uh, you know the climate change aspect in terms of you know uh, your vulnerability how do you address that vulnerability in terms of a sustainability how do you address the sustainability issues that are there uh, for uh, this thing as well as also in terms of your your rights in terms of what is it that you can you and who you should be asking and you don't have to depend on somebody else to take you there so you can go to the ITDA you can go to the collector's office you can go to the to the district uh, 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 district office and you can uh, now start you know taking control of your life. uh thank you thank you so much myron for uh, really sharing these uh, very inspiring stories and uh, you know uh, experiences of transformation that uh, your team has uh, achieved and the stories of these really uh, inspiring uh, women who have uh, 
transform their lives and also of their communities uh, and you've uh, you've also kind of uh, brought into focus again on the detox forum that uh, literacy is not just you know like being able to read and write some words yeah. or do some math questions but it's it's about you know exploring your potential about opportunity about confidence about uh, you know like having agency uh, and yeah. and that's the, uh, and that's what you know literacy unlocks uh, the the power of human potential so uh, uh, thank you so much for uh, you know uh, giving us time here on this forum for sharing these wonderful ideas uh, and uh, we hope that all those who are watching this uh, session and who uh, will be watching this video in the in the coming time as well as we uh, further share it in our networks uh, learn from this uh, amazing initiative uh, of uh, laya uh, and you know kind of also look at literacy and at integrating literacy uh, within uh, their programs uh, as well because it, it's something which is uh, which is kind of critical gateway uh, skill to many of the other uh, development uh, you know uh, development outcomes which uh, which people are trying to achieve Absolutely. so on that note madan thank you so much uh, for Thanks, for joining us today Thank you.